Uh, all right, Adam, I'm just spitballing here. Yeah, I, you, it's what you eat. You best. know when I spitball, you know, it just could get a little crazy. But I figured Jordan Love, as soon as Trevor Lawrence signed, would sign soon after because I think he is your best comp. To, I, th- I think I think Jordan Love's better than Tua, and I don't know mm-hmm. if Dak's going to sign. I don't think he really wants to play this year out if, if Dak's going to get his deal done next year. Mm-hmm. That's why I think it's on the Packers. I think if, if the Packers went to Jordan Love and said, we'll give you Trevor Lawrence's deal, I think he'd take it in a second. I'm just spitballing, well, I, but I think it's the Packers that are holding this thing up. What do you think? I, I think it's been a negotiation. I don't think anybody's holding it up. I think that you're having these talks and they evolve as they go along. And the latest factor that influences the discussions is the deal that Trevor Lawrence gets done with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that deal doesn't help Green Bay. That deal helps Jordan Love because the average comes in at 55 and breaking news, I don't believe Jordan Love is taking less than Trevor Lawrence. Just don't think he's doing mm-hmm. it. So if the deal had gotten done, let's just say a few weeks ago, I could have seen that number being 52, 53. And now I see that number being north of 55. Not much north of, but north of 55. And by the way, the way the deal is also structured and set up is not favorable to the Green Bay Packers and what they were hoping to do, right? Like they wanted to get this deal done. And instead, It's a situation uh, where – I'm just looking through my notes from last week, right? Uh, The base value – yeah, you you see, like, before before the Packers could have said, okay, you're not Joe Burrow yet, so you should get less than 55. They could have said – Would have been fair. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Because now they can't say that because Lawrence just got 55. And so I think, you know, to me that that was not a win for the Packers when that Lawrence deal came down. And um, we'll see how it works out. But I, I think Jordan Love's how, in a great spot. How big, of a, how big of a sticking point would removing the franchise be for a young player? Because you know Jordan Love, if he plays well, he's going to get another kick at the cat. Could that be holding this up? Removing the franchise tag, saying that he can't be tagged again. Yeah, yeah. kind of like a kind of like Dak Prescott's yeah. deal with the with the Cowboys. Yeah. I've not heard that come up in conversations. Now, again, could that be something that's introduced into conversation? I, I think you know the bigger issue here is you know Jordan Love's going into that last year. Um, Dak, when that got done, it was a lot more contentious and protracted. And it had gone on to the point where that was one of the concessions that the Cowboys gave him that I think today, if we were reviewing it, they would like to take that back because they empowered Dak Prescott to become the most powerful player in football right now, the player with the most leverage. There's not a player in the league today with more leverage than Dak Prescott, who if he wants can hit the free agent market after this season. Yeah, I mean, that's and, and that's an interesting sticking point to me, Adam, just because yep. I remember when Aaron Rodgers was going through a contract negotiation with the Packers and he wanted to try to make fully guaranteed deals, more of a normal thing, especially for higher-end right. players. And obviously he struck out on that. But Dak getting that that no franchise tag clause and giving him that much power at the next negotiation. It almost seems like that would have been the next best thing if more quarterbacks want to make that a thing going forward. But clearly teams don't want to give that up. You know what's funny about that is when I was covering the Denver Broncos in the early 1990s and they created the franchise tag, they created the franchise tag in part through the former Broncos owner, Pat Bowen, so that players like John Elway and Dan Marino couldn't leave their teams. That was why the NFL created the franchise tag, to put on players like that. So now, some, I don't know, 30-plus years later, now you've got a quarterback in Dak Prescott that had it prohibited that he could be franchise tagged when that was why the tag was created. 
the league has gotten away from why the tag was created. Now, like they're using it on a wide receiver or an edge rusher or a cornerback. That was not the purpose of the franchise tag. And the franchise tag was done to keep a face of a franchise, a franchise icon in a particular place and ensure that he couldn't leave. And again, to me, in a way, uh, I don't mean to be unfair to quarterback. It should be on quarterbacks or almost nobody. Like quarterbacks are paid at an extreme level. They're that important. Uh, you, you're going to limit the price that a cornerback or an edge rusher can make. Like they don't even make what the quarterbacks make anyway. So um, I don't know. Like there's a lot of things that are going to come up in the next CBA, which expires. Current one expires in 2030. League is going to want to get to 18 games. Clearly. League is going to want to expand internationally. Clearly, there's going to be a lot that the league is going to want. Honestly, if I'm players, one of the things I'm after, they're going to hate me for saying this. I'm just, but I'd be after the increased increases in franchises' value over time because the value of these franchises is skyrocketed, and the players get don't get that. And I would be interested in somehow limiting, if not abolishing the franchise tag. Like, why should that be there? Mm. Why should that be there? No, you're right. Chewy, uh, Chewy, 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 weren't you tagged once? I was close to being tagged and actually mm. signed. Uh, me and Andy Reid, <laughs> me and Andy Reid negotiated the deal. It was funny. I was in the really? weight room working out, and it was about the next day was free agency, and Andy comes down and says, what do you want? I said this. I said, well, is someone saying you want this? I said, no, I want this. He goes up, yep. talks to Mike Reinfeld, yep. uh, who was the cap guy at the time, came down and said, all right, it's done. I'm like, all right, I'll keep working Who was your out. agent? Who, who was your, who was Eric, your agent? Man, er, Eric Metz. He had, yeah, I, I know. you know Eric? Yeah, <laughs> yeah and yeah, Eric yeah, was yeah. the greatest. Eric didn't care. So yeah. it's, it's funny. I could, I, could, I could totally see that, yep.